All right, and we are live. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on Cup Chat. Um, it is just me today from the regular Cup Chat team because Emily is out in the field with the Rio Diablo Birding Camp youth. Um, they've been having a great week. I hope you've been following them on social media to see everything they're up to. They've been in and out of areas of cell service, so um, they haven't been posting super, super often. Um, and yesterday, especially, they had no cell service all day. I was relieved when they finally texted to say that they were okay because I hadn't heard from them. But um, they've been having a great time um, and, and they may pop in to join us this morning. They're going to see if they can find a little spot of cell service so that they can all wave and say hello. So, but I do have somebody with me. So as y'all can see, this is my guest, Angie Arredondo, and she is at the Welder Wildlife Foundation. If y'all have been on, she, let's see, did you last come on with us to talk about mist nets, right? Yep, and uh, yeah, I think just mist netting and maps, mist nets. general maps overview. Map stations, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so today we're gonna talk about something that you use when you're doing maps. Um, and this is something that I feel like some people have probably heard of. I told Emily that while she was gone, I was gonna do a concept that was like super nerdy. And it's true that I think even a lot of beginner birders don't know about alpha codes. So Angie, you wanna give us a quick rundown on what is an alpha code and why might they be used? Sure, so uh, alpha codes are you can kind of think of it as a shorthand for identifying species when you're in the field. So there's four letter codes and those come from the common names of bird species we have in North America and a few other countries as well. And then we have six letter alpha codes that uh, come from the scientific names of uh, the bird species that you might be encountering. So um, there's these general rules, but they were put together by uh, Peter Pyle and uh, David DeSanti. Uh, who are with the Institute of Bird Population, and they kind of go uh, coincide with the American Ornithological Society, which used to be the AOU or American Ornithological Union. Um, and they just help us, you know, when we're recording data, instead of writing out Northern Cardinal, we can take a few letters from each two-part name and write it down much quicker. Um, and it just saves some time. Originally, it was used mostly through the scientific world, but it slowly started creeping into, you know, birders recording personal lists that they're taking in the field. You can use them on some apps now and things like that. So they're just an easy way to record the bird species you might be seeing out in the field when you're out birding. Yeah, so I figure for those who haven't seen these, I was gonna share my screen real quick so that everybody can see kind of how this looks because um, it is a new concept for some people. So this is, the, um, this is the website, the Institute for Bird Populations has a really handy list of these. Um, they are standardized. Um, and so that's, you know, as Angie said, it makes it easy because you don't have to write the whole thing out if you put M-O-D-O, -O, anybody knows that you mean a morning dove because that's kind of a standardized um, four letter code. And that's something that's possible in part because as Angie mentioned, these are standardized based off of the, um, the four letter codes are based off of the common names. And in birds, I don't, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but birds have standardized common names. And that's not true of all of our other wildlife, right? So um, there's some things that generally speaking, you know, everybody knows what you're talking about. Like if I say raccoon, Angie knows exactly what animal I'm talking about. Um, but if I say a trash panda, um, that's something that a Angie, Angie still, do you know what I'm talking about, Angie? Yes, I do. Okay, so Angie knows what I'm talking about, but somebody 40 or 50 years older than us might not know because that's kind of a newer term for, uh, for raccoon. And it's a pretty good common name actually like it's a pretty accurate it really is yeah it really is it's I funny that's came up with we that. laugh about it I don't know either but it's quite good um but it is. that's but it's not something that you know it's kind of been a social media thing so for people who don't use social media they might not be aware of it or if we go to another country you know if, if you go to um if you go to Canada and talk about raccoons, they know what you're talking about. But if you talk about a trash panda, I don't know. Maybe they do know because social media is kind of everywhere. But the, the point is that yeah. common names, that's one of the importance of scientific names, right? Is that if I say Procyon Lotor, that's the scientific name of a raccoon. And that doesn't matter if I'm here 
or in England or, you know, wherever, uh, not there over there, but people know like the, you know, that's a standardized name. That's exactly a particular animal that that refers to. But with birds in part, um, you know, because birding is such a popular activity and it's something that's been happening for a long time, a while ago, we got standardized um, four-letter species codes. And as Angie mentioned too, the American Ornithologist Union, now the American Ornithological Society has been a big um, part of that too, of just helping, you know, kind of develop these, like we have uh, commonly used ethics for birding and we have, you know, standardized species names. There's a lot of, um, it's very formal overall as an activity, I guess I would say. So, um, so I'm going to, so the Institute for Bird Populations has some of these standardized names. Um, if you're interested in looking these up over here, they have alpha codes in taxonomic order, alpha codes alphabetically by English name, scientific name, or you can get all of them. So um, if you click on uh, one of these, it will pull you up to a page and we have 2,158 <laughs> alpha codes for bird species. Oh. Angie, do you have, do you have all of these memorized? <laughs> Oh gosh, no, but that's actually, see, that's funny. That's been updated since I last saw it. Last time I saw it, it said it covered about 2,129 species. So see, it's mm -hmm. it's updating every time. It's uh, there's growing. a change to the AOS <laughs> number or birds. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. But no, I do have no, I have by no means all of these uh, memorized. <laughs> <laughs> but there is, as Angie mentioned, there's a little bit of like a, a system or a pattern to how it's done. So I'm going to zoom in real quick. Um, our Rio Diablo um, kids saw some acorn woodpeckers when they were in Fort Davis. So I'm going to use this one here as an example. So as Angie mentioned, the four letter code, um, typically we're going to take the first, if we've got, you know, a two part name, acorn woodpecker, we're going to take the first two letters from the first name and the first two letters from the second name. So we have an A-C-W-O stands for acorn woodpecker. Now the scientific name, um, we've got Melanerpes formic formicivorous. Ooh, do they eat ants? Is that what that comes from? I guess they probably do. Huh? Formica usually means that oh, prefix exists. usually is, is ants, yeah. Um, and so for the scientific name for the six letter code, we're gonna grab the M-E-L F O R and we get Mel four is our six letter code. So Angie, can you talk a little bit about when you use these codes and also, so I just kind of explained that system. Does it always work that way? Or are there, are there times that it doesn't work to just grab the, the first four letters? <laughs> I wish it was always so simple, um, but no, it's not. Uh, there are some exceptions to the rules. Um, for example, the barred owl and the barn owl would both have the same alpha code because they're both B-A-O-W. However, we can't have the same alpha code for each one. So I believe for the barn owl, it is B-A-R-O-W, but for the barred owl, it's B-D-O-W. So they take the first letter of the first name and the last net letter of the first name and then the first two of the last name. So uh, there's always these exceptions. If a uh, species is hyphenated, like a white-eyed vireo, uh, mm -hmm. you take the first letter mm -hmm. of the first hyphenated name, the first letter of the second hyphenated name, and then the first two letters of the last name. So you get what we in the map station call weebies, or uh, W-E-V-I. And so um, mentioning maps, we most often use them during bird research. So for like our map station, which stands for monitoring avian productivity and survivorship, um, I don't know if you can see this, but these are our data sheets on our map station. So it's a lot of data that we have to be taking. And you'll see that we have to actually record our alpha code because it just makes things so much more quicker for us when we're recording that data. Um, you know, we don't want to have the birds in hand too, too long. We're trying to keep them um, in and out of the station pretty quickly, reduce the amount of stress we're putting on those animals. So writing those really quick terms down helps speed up that process quite a bit. Um, but you know, uh, when I would help with bird surveys, breeding bird surveys, point count surveys, instead of writing out the whole name when you're picking up calls from different birds that you're hearing or seeing, it was much easier just to write these alpha codes down instead of writing out the whole name. So that's generally what we use them for. I use them a lot for the map stations, but I've used them in other bird research programs as well. Maureen. <gasps> Hello. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen real quick so that we can see y'all. We have- Hi, a say hi. Kids. 
Good morning. All right. How's it going, everybody? Good morning. We're doing good. We are headed out to Seminole Canyon this morning to do some birding and look at some art, uh, rock art. Um, so really quick, we'll put some of the kids on the spot really quick to see, say what their favorite birds were, okay? So, okay, and well, I have a quiz for them too after they say what their favorite birds oh, are. Oh, you have so. a quiz for them. Great, we weren't prepared. That's super short, <laughs> it's okay. That's the okay. point, it's a pop quiz. Jacob, favorite bird you've seen? Northern Tropical Perula Hybrid. Northern Tropical Perula Hybrid, anybody else? Yell them out. Uh, Grace's Warbler. Grace's Warbler, Elf Owl, anyone else? Mm -hmm. Scrub Jay, Rivoli's Hummingbird. Western Screech Owl. Western Screech Owl. Ooh. What'd you say, Aaron? Lesser Nighthawk. Lesser Nighthawk. So we have seen, uh, doing this on my phone is not the best. So we've seen lots of birds. Ryan just gave an update. We've seen 157 species and hopefully we'll add a few to that total this morning. Um, so shoot us with this quiz you've got for us, Maureen. Okay, so we're talking about species codes and how those are alpha code, bird alpha codes and how those are usually used by researchers. So if I want to ask and see how prevalent this is and see if anybody knows, if I say I saw a nomo, does anybody in the van know what I saw? Nomo. Nomo. Northern mockingbird. They All said right. yes. Northern yeah. mockingbirds. Good job. Okay, cool. You pass. Continue on. <laughs> All right. Well, we have got to keep rolling, so we will see you later. Um, and you'll have a good rest of the cup chat and happy Wednesday from us here at Rio Diablo Birding Camp. Happy birding. Y'all have a great morning. What? Happy birding. Okay. Bye. Bye. Man, those are some good species they're seeing. Yeah, they have had an excellent, excellent trip. They saw, um, they only heard the Kalima warbler, which was like their big, big bend target. So just so, oh. every, just so everybody knows, we've talked about Rio Diablo um, birding camp, but just to kind of, you know, highlight some of what those kids have been up to. Um, we picked them up in Del Rio on Saturday, and then they drove to Big Bend, and Sunday they got up at like 4.30 in the morning to go do the long hike to go find the Kalima warbler. Um, thankfully, it was not super hot, um, so that was nice, but they heard the Kalima warbler. They did not see it, so that was uh, kind of, you know, a little bit of a bummer, but honestly, some of the other species they've seen, they've they've had a great, great trip so far. So thank you real quick to everybody out there who supported the youth birding camp. Um, we really appreciate that. And so y'all know, if you go to our website, there's a spot where you can donate to our youth programs and it helps make it more affordable for youth to go out and do things like that. Um, and in addition to seeing birds, they um, learned about some of the mammals of the region. They had a skins and schools demonstration. They learned about bats. They, a biologist went out and did some bat mist netting for them. So that was fun. Um, they've cool. been, um, yeah, they were going to get, uh, some of these have been private properties. So they were learning about private property, land stewardship, um, just kind of like crash course and everything. As they mentioned, they're going to go see rock art today. So yeah, so it's, a, it's been fun. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. a fun camp. Yeah. I always think it's yeah. funny when you're around bird nerds who are starting to hear bird species names and they're just like, Ooh, Ooh, <laughs> every time they mention a bird that they saw, I was like, Oh. Oh man, I haven't seen that one. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So back to our alpha codes. Um, we were, I mean, I don't even know what we were talking about now. Oh, I was, I wanted to share the screen again real quick because Angie mentioned the wide-eyed veer. Oh, we were talking about just you know, if you're writing down the things that you've seen, mm -hmm. that it can take a very long time. It, it's much quicker to write out the species code. So I was going to find on, oops, let's see if I can find real quick, white eyed. It's going to take a second to search through all of those birds. Okay, right. so there's oh, we've got white eyed thrush or white eyed vireo. And so what you said you call these weavies. Yes. <laughs> and so I just wanted to illustrate real quick the um, when it's hyphenated like that, yeah, you grab the first letter from before the hyphen, the first letter from after the hyphen, and then the um, the VI. So there is sort of a pattern to it. Um, as Angie mentioned, though, it's certainly not something like she doesn't have all, just all of them memorized. 
Um, and Angie, so when you're when you're doing this, um, when you're doing the maps stations, you're always using the four letter codes, not the six letter codes. Yes. Uh, to be honest, I've never actually used the six letter codes. I've always only used the okay. four letter codes. And it's funny, you mentioned earlier, it's kind of like a, another language you almost have to learn. So if you ever come to our map station when we're walking back from the nets and we have birds in the bags were like, got a Noka, got a Weavy, got a Pabu. And people are like, what are you talking about? Especially those that are just learning the, the uh, alpha codes. But yeah, it's definitely, it's a good thing to learn. Makes things much faster for recording your data and things like that. But it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. And I, yeah. <laughs> and I do feel like it has expanded some, like there's more and more birders that kind of know it too. Again, just because it's a quick way to, um, to note something um so I was I was curious to see if the kids you know if they yeah. if they knew and they did that's so good. that's yeah that's mm -hmm. yeah I think it's it's useful so if you're a beginning birder don't go oh my gosh I have 2100 things to learn now uh, but just know that it's out there and it's a resource um and yeah it's kind of cool so yeah uh, I yeah yeah I think I think it's kind of fun to the, um, and and it's, it is, it's just useful. I use it all the time when I'm making notes just so that I can write things faster. So. Yeah, and I will mention, okay. I know um, iBird Pro or just the iBird birding app, you can use alpha codes to search for species you might be interested in. Or if you don't know the alpha code and you know the common name, you can type it in and it'll give you their alpha code. Um, you can do the same on eBird too. So that kind of makes, if you're keeping an eBird list too, that makes it a lot easier to search for the species you might be seeing that day. Yeah, that's a good point. Because yeah, so if you don't know them, there are apps that can, there's an app for that. Mm -hmm. There is, <laughs> so, almost yeah. an app for everything yeah. now. <laughs> yes. All right, so Angie, do you have a favorite alpha code? Uh, I It's by no means my favorite bird. It's a cool bird, but I just like the great egret one because it's just funny how it works out. His name's Greg. <laughs> Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, well, let's go find him real quick. Yeah, Great. I just think Egret. it's funny that his alpha code works out the way. There's some that just work out. That, it's like, oh, that's that funny. is funny. <laughs> yeah, but that's his name. I like that one too. Um, I was thinking the other day, I, I don't think there are any, you, you know, so obviously these are standardized, right? So somebody went through and decided there's a barn owl and a barred owl, what are we going to do about that? You know, so there's, there's that standardization to them. Um, so I'm sure I was trying to think, I wonder if there are any birds that would make a, an obscenity, like <laughs> if there's any that, you know, if you just went following the normal, um, you know, like the usual method, right. if it would make a bad, a four, you know, their four letter alpha code, yes. if we get a four letter word out of it. Um, and I don't, I couldn't come up with one that would make that. I'm sure that if it was going to do that, then the standardization would be to not, they, they changed something about it so that it wouldn't be that. Probably. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. I can't think I of any. Um, yeah. And then like for, for, so for word, for birds that only have a single name, like the Inhingo or the Dixis, will you just take the four, yes. first four letters of. Oh, so that's a good, that Dixis, I wonder what that. How do you spell Dixisle? It's like this. D I C K. There oh, it is. Yep, it is. D I C K. Yep. Yep. So if uh, <laughs> that's one you might have to be careful with, especially if somebody comes back and tells you they saw a bunch of those in the field. Yes. Um, <laughs> we uh, just just know that that's an abbreviation. I Dixisle. mean, a Dixisle, so Dixisle, which is a beautiful little bird. <laughs> it's a beautiful little bird with a really. I, I don't not I don't want to say a beautiful song, but it's a very distinctive it is. call that they have. Yeah, that's a funny. We should talk. You know what? We're gonna have a whole separate cup chat sometime on birds that supposedly say their name. Oh, that'd be a good because one. people because people say that Dixis will say their name, and I don't really think it sounds like that. I, I, it, they just go, rah, rah, rah. Yeah. and so I get that it's like Dixis will, but it's a stretch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like the great Kiss Kitty sounds like he's saying Kiss Kitty. He does, although somebody mentioned to me that they also can say, like, a, another mnemonic is trick-or-treat, and sometimes I feel more like they're saying trick-or-treat. Yeah, than I can hear that. Mm -hmm. So I like that one, too, but that's, okay, that's going to be, I'm not going to say anything else, we're going to have a whole separate okay. cup chat <laughs> on birds that supposedly say their name, because I have some very strong opinions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bird calls are another level, oh goodness. Yeah. 
So I think you mentioned the one that is probably one of my favorite um, codes, and that is the painted bunting or the paboo. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the one that just kind of turns out funny and in part. So for anybody who has um, who has come with us to Learn to Bird last year, which we had a small group, but we've got an, another Learn to Bird starting. Uh, we'll have more of them this fall. Um, we have, I have a little friend with me. So when you're learning to use your binoculars, mm -hmm. I have a little stuffed painted bunting that my support staff gave to me and I love him. And we hide him in the tree so that you can <laughs> practice using your binoculars with a bird that's not trying to get away, right? So if you've never used binoculars before, it can be a little tricky to make sure you get them focused and you know, find your, you know, find the target. Um, and so anyhow, so this painted bunting helped us out. I decided he needed a name. And so because their species code is Pabu, his name is Pablo. So this is Pablo the Pabu. So that is part of why. I love it. <laughs> That's now my, my favorite species code. Yeah. So, so that is, that is Pablo. So, well, I think we covered um, most of what we needed to on alpha codes. Angie, do you have any other thoughts on alpha codes you want to share real quick? Yeah, so just, just keep in mind that, again, they follow those general rules, but there are some exceptions. So if you're ever not sure, I mean, it's a long list to carry. I think that one list on IDP is 49 pages or something yeah, like that. Oh, let's, but let's look. I just stopped sharing it, but now I'm, now I'm curious. Let's see how many pages it is. I was looking at it last night, I think, and I was like, man, this goes on forever. <laughs> yeah, 30. Let's so you're on page see. 30 of 49. Oh, did, okay. 49 pages. Whew. Ooh, so from, what's it go, from A to Z, from um, Abert's Tohi, the Abto, Abto. to the, to, <laughs> I like that one too, to the zone-tailed hawk or the Zaha. Yeah. <laughs> so. So that's the other fun thing. You can try and, you know, put all the letters. You know, I don't mean, I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but it just works out. So you can say Modo earlier, Maureen was talking about M-O-D-O. -O. We scream Modo right. when, or Nomo when we hear those birds. But um, yeah, just if, I think one thing you can try and do is if you know you're going birding in a particular region, write down the list of alpha codes that you might be seeing in that area at, in that season. And that might kind of help you narrow it down instead of carrying all 49 pages with you, might as well make a small book. But so I would narrow it down if you could, but um, there is, is an alpha code for every sing single species and they strategically kind of made it that way. So uh, you'll never have one repeating. So don't worry about that. Um, but if you can grasp onto those, you know, four basic rules, general rules for making alpha codes, you, you can probably get it in pretty quickly and easily for yourself. Yeah, and I'm sure if you're looking at this list right now, there's some like, you know, a Zapata wren, like that sounds cool, but I don't know what that is. And yeah. I have no idea where they live and I guarantee you it's not here in Texas. So that's oh. definitely one that I, I won't need to know. Um, so in addition to those apps, though, the other thing y'all may have just seen me do is that if you're on your um, your computer, or your phone, on your phone, you can type, uh, there's usually like a, in your browser, you can find where it says search in page, or if you're on your browser, I was just hitting control F, and that then that was how I got to the um, the search function. So if I wanted to see like cardinal, I can type that in, and it'll really quickly take me um, to the, to where we've got a cardinal. That's another, that's another fun one is the, the NOCA. Noka. Um, the, the, Scream that a lot on know, a weekly so. basis. <laughs> yes, yes. I feel the mockingbird's another one that's funny to me because you can say it like no mo and it, like there's no more is kind of what it sounds like, but yeah. there's always more mockingbirds. Yes. So it's, we actually caught <laughs> a kind of ironic. We caught a northern perula, a nopa, last week at the map station. So that was the first time I got to use the nopa alpha code. Nice. But Nopa, that's a fun one. Yeah. 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 And that's a cool thing for y'all to catch too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, as the as the kids mentioned, they found a, a hybrid um, northern and tropical perula when they were out at Devils yesterday. So and I think they have a chance to see a northern to, they might find some pure northern tomorrow. So that's really cool. Um, so no, for the alpha so. code for that, would that be the four letters for the Nopa and then the four letters for the Let's see what's the northern tropical you know, or the tropical perula. That is a really good question. So we, you yeah, because we've got an you know, I I bet you would just write it as the both of them, but just a second ago I saw one that was a a hybrid. So this is a good question. Okay, so let's see. Here's an example. Well, let's let's find it. Oh no, that's Townsend's and Hermit Warbler 
hybrid. So it looks like we've got a THW. So they grabbed the first from each of those. So the T from Townsend's, mm -hmm. H from Hermit, and W from Warbler, and then an H okay. at the end. And hybrid See, I kind of interesting that. Thing. I probably would have written all of them out. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have either. But so when I searched this just now, we've only got 15 matches for this whole thing. But there's a lot more species than that that hybridize. So now I'm kind of curious, how do they decide which of the of the hybrid ones? Let's see. So Western, Glaucus, Winged, Gull, Hybrid. So there they grabbed the hyphenated part, the Glaucus, Winged, Hybrid. And Western Mountain mm -hmm. Bluebird. Okay, Western Mountain Bluebird Hybrid. I'm very curious as to how they decide those. And as we've talked in a previous cup chat, cup chat that hybrids, hybridization and species, we had a, um, a hot topics about what makes a species and that you know can definitely be debated. Um, and so I don't know why there's not a Northern and Tropical Perula hybrid code. Um, that's okay. interesting. So, hmm. Nicole. Hmm, it is cool. All right, cool. Well, so Angie and I actually have a different meeting to get to this morning. Um, so we wanted to end right on time, which I know is shocking because we never do that. But I'm going to go ahead and put in a plug for next week's cup chat. Um, Angie, you live on the coast. Have you been to the beach lately? No. <laughs> it's not like uh, I mean it's not like we live in Florida it's not like you're like oh yeah the beach is yeah. you know, nearby you have to you have to I'll say our to beaches aren't like are. yeah and our beaches yeah. aren't you know miraculous blue waters right. that you'd see everywhere so and we used to go so much as a kid that I'm just like eh. <laughs> I'll go every <laughs> once in a while but it's the time of year spring is typically windy right and so it's not necessarily the best yeah. time to go to the beach but not if you want if, a sandblasted face. <laughs> yeah, I get really exfoliated, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but if you are planning on going to the beach, A, be warned that you might get free sand exfoliation on your face. But B, um, you should be aware of living well with the wildlife that lives there all the time. And, and so next week we have a guest on to talk to us about if you're going to the beach, how can you be bird friendly. And that will apply whether you're in Texas or if you've taken a trip somewhere like Florida and you've got some really pretty beaches to be on. So um, so she'll be on that's that's our, our next week cup chat. Yeah, so it should be fun. So um, all right. So thank you so much, Angie, for joining us um, and talking about having me. totally nerding out on alpha codes with me. <laughs> I don't think of I'm course. Will be Anytime we'll read. <laughs> Thanks. So, all right. Until next week, everyone. Thank you so much. And we will see you later.